Hey, welcome. This is Jelle from Growing Bonsai. And as we say in the Netherlands, er is een tijd van komen en er is een tijd van gaan. Or in other words, there is a time that you keep and hold on to something. And there is a time to give things away. This is an air layer I took last year. It has well rooted, it has developed nicely. And one of my friends commented upon the video, I'd like to have that tree. What are you going to do with it? Well, the answer is, it's going in a box, it's going to be shipped. Today, in this video, how do you ship bonsai? Now, of course, there's two ways to look at shipping trees. One way is, how do I ship trees? The other way is, how do others do it? So, later in this video, I'm going to show you what's in this box. What did I buy? How did they ship it? But first, let's take a look at how I ship trees that are not in a ceramic container. This is a very light bonsai. It is not in a ceramic pot, so this is actually a very easy tree to ship, you would think. But the position in the pot makes it a complex one to ship. In fact, it needs to be wrapped in a way that it is tilted at an angle. One of the things to keep in mind, and you can already see it here, you need to make sure your tree is well watered before you send it off. In fact, this tree has been watered in the early morning, midday, and just now, so it is full of water, it is ready to go in the box and not get any water for maybe two, three days to ship it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fill up the pot all the way to the rim. Then I'm going to cover the pot with tape to make sure the substrate can't fall out. That way I'm securing the tree to the pot in a way that there's no wiggle space. Then I'm going to put something underneath the pot to make it tilted. But before I do, let's select the box. If you send trees more often, of course helps to collect them. This one might do. Yeah, that's about right. The box that you need, actually there's two boxes that you need. I have selected two small boxes. This one I think is too small because it has to match the pot size. This one doesn't. This one, however, does. What I'll use it for, I'll show you later in the video. And then I've selected a much bigger pot, and this is the one which is going to hold the whole tree. I've brought some foam board, which I'm going to use to secure the whole thing inside the box. And I'm going to just fill it up with wrapping carton. Important, when you're looking for a box to ship trees in, make sure that the cardboard is double density. As you can see, there's two layers of cardboard here. This will make the box stronger. So that if it is folded closed and somebody puts in something heavy on top, the box doesn't get crushed. Next to this, you need to make sure the tree is watered. I already mentioned that. You need to make sure that the tree is completely immobile in the box. It is not a problem if an individual branch touches the side of the box, but don't squeeze it in because then any pressure that you put on the box will make branches break. Basically, that's all there is to it. Let's get this going. Let's get this done. Let's fill this up first with substrate, then tape it up with tape. Put some plastic around it so the box doesn't get soaked with water. And then I'll put it into the box right here. Of course, long, fresh growth can damage during transport. And I asked my friend and he didn't mind if we just take out the growing tips and reduce overly long branches so it fits better in a box. This is of course something you have to discuss with the person you're sending it to before you do this work. Now, when you're going to ship a tree, it's important to also check the weather forecast. Keep in mind, mailing trucks are typically not full of airco or heaters. So in the middle of winter and in hot summer, there is a slight risk of a tree getting heat damage or cold damage. Now, I know that next week is going to be quite cloudy, windy, tomorrow is going to be rainy. So I'm taking this risk with shipping it right now. But when it is very cold outside, say zero Fahrenheit or minus 20, minus 30 Celsius, I would not ship a tree. So this is now covered with substrate. Clean the edge of the pot and tape it over. And tape it over. That's all there is to it for the whole pot, of course. So substrate nice and covered. Um, Get it covered up in plastic foil to avoid water reaching the pot and keeping it nice and moist. As you can tell, I'm recycling. 
Um, the same with my boxes. If you ship trees more often, it's useful to just keep some of the boxes and keep some of the wrapping so you don't have to buy it for your trees. Reuse, recycle. It's better for the world as well and saves you some money. Just a little friendly tip. Right, tie this off. All ready to go into a box. will do. So now that it is done, basically it just sits in the box like this. I only, only need to fill it up to make sure it can't wiggle anymore. And then I can close the box and I can just put this in the larger box. So now by squeezing the pot in with wrapping, we've created a self-contained unit. Um, I'm just going to make a little bit of a hole here so that I can actually put the trunk in as well. Close the box off. Just like this. And tape it closed. And this way you just have something that is completely immobile and this I can tape into the main box and then hardly anything can happen to the tree unless somebody of course damages the box itself. But hey, let's have a bit of faith. Time for the big matrushka trick. One box, another box. Gently move the tree in. This is going to break off. Might as well clip it off now. And gently move it in. Now it's a matter securing this to the box. And for this, I'm going to use strips of this blue material. This foam board, I'll just squeeze in here. But first I need to slide it to size. So one of the things that I like to do to avoid breakage of branches is to wrap the branches with a piece of plastic before I do the final packaging, just like this. Tape this together. Um, this way there's no pressure directly on the branches from the box. It is free from the box and all the branches are protected as a whole rather than individual. And I tell myself this helps protecting it. Whether it's true, I don't know. So now what you can see is that the foam board here has been inserted on the side. This will hold the box down so that this can't move up and the crown can't be crushed. And now it is just time to fill this up all with packing peanuts or what I've left over here. Just bits of old cardboard fillers. Um, this just helps to provide stability. It stops the tree from moving around too much. It keeps the foam in place. Basically I'm just filling it up without putting all that much pressure on the tree. But now you also see why there is a bit of a covering around the tree. This just keeps the whole thing together and in place, hopefully ensuring that the tree arrives in good hands. My friend's place. Right, all filled, all packed. Now it's a matter of closing the box and bringing it to the mill. Actually, I should order delivery as well, right? Need to go online, get a ticket. Um, it's important to get as little wiggle space in the box as possible because this protects the tree. Or you protect, you put the tree so tightly here at the bottom that the top is completely free and the box is very stable. Then there's nothing touching the canopy. That's also a way to send it. Um, yeah, ready to go. Right, I could now have a whole story on how I was at the mill and I dropped off this parcel and this parcel was waiting, but it's of course not completely true. Um, because you already saw this parcel at the beginning of the video. Now, what I'm going to do, um, let's see, how did they wrap this? These are clearly two boxes, banana boxes glued together. There should be a joint somewhere here. I think there's a joint here. 
let me just open it up along the joint and the seam, see how far we can get. Are you like me, that you get very excited when you have a new box? I know I am. And then because you don't wrap it yourself, you don't really know how the boxes come together. Ha. I see something. So there you have it. Very similar to what I was saying before. Look, the pot is wrapped in plastic and connected to the bottom of the box. This tree is completely freestanding in the box. Um, this is of course a Fraxinus. Uh, let me remove the wraps here, then I can take the whole thing out probably. There we go. That's nice and easy. So this ash, Fraxinus, was sent to me. I bought it on the, the European bonsai auctions and shipped by a friend of mine in the Netherlands. Overnight Express, very, very nice. Then it spent two days, I think, at the mill office because I wasn't able to go and pick it up in the Netherlands. But hey, who cares, right? It's here. Let's get this out of the pot. This is nice and double wrapped. Nice as in, it is hard to get through. But it sits well in place. It protects the pot, it protects the trunk. This is good wrapping. Very nicely done. Nice and wet the soil. Pot is nice and full. I think I should be able to get this all off now. Yep, there we go. Right, so this is my new tree. I'll pot it in a few, little bit bigger pot for the season. I'm not going to disturb the roots, I'm just going to take it out, take a pot that's a little bit bigger, fill it up with substrate. It is nice and organic, nice and wet, good for an ash. And we'll see, there might be a nice video about this tree in a year or two when I've done something with it. Nice. So there you have it. Shipping of bonsai trees. It doesn't have all to it doesn't have to be all that complex. It can be quite straightforward. Thank you for watching. This was Jelle, Growing Bonsai. Keep doing that and see you next time.